Okay, Mr. Dave's fake rock sculpting practice with sand number three. I'm gonna pick up the pace here and go a little high speed. All right, there I am talking really fast, sound like a mouse. Hey, we're talking about our trials here. They, they round out over years of using them at sand, in sand sculptures we've done. That's actually a tool I've had for 25 years or so. We're packing the sand up, we're gonna get a starting point, but the sand itself really makes a good medium for practicing how to shape out fake rocks. It just packs up nicely with the trowels, big flat surfaces of the trowels, and they tend to make sort of angular little areas. You can find, you can see the lines in them that are just sort of automatically created when you're tapping it. Now we're gonna go ahead and put in some cracks in here, but I wanted to talk about the, the nature of putting in cracks. What's, a, what's the way we do that? And again, we're using nature or the natural thing as our guide. And so we're doing those little undercuts that look sort of like a fault line there. That was a fault line crack. And then you have the uh, onion or peel away sections where sort of scalloped portions of the rock are peeling away. One of the things I've noticed in the faux rock world is a lot of guys will just start making cracks and they never stop. So there's just cracks everywhere. They just go crazy with cracks. They put too many cracks in it and then sometimes you end up with these congregating areas almost like the spoke on a wheel or a wagon wheel and that doesn't look as natural um, you'll find that on occasion in nature but it's a good thing to keep those down to a minimum and remember you don't want to have cracks everywhere a lot of guys get into a pattern and, and you know i can get into that habit too so we have to be careful um, we want to have the detail area and then we want to have areas with not as much detail. That, that uh, balance of detail and non-detail is very, very important. Again, it looks more natural. So you can see that onion peel away I did. I also wanted to talk about when you start doing brick patterns in uh, vertical sections of uh, walls, retaining walls, and even in your rock work sections. A lot of times people are either making them look like bricks that were manufactured by mankind, as it were, or they're actually a natural phenomenon that occurs. In this case, we're looking at patterns that are just obviously been created by mankind. We want to create uh, variations in the uh, ins and outs, the, the, the levels of these bricks as they protrude out of the wall or recess in a little bit. Okay, so let's slow down a little bit and hear what I have to say because it's kind of interesting, some of the thoughts that I had when I was sculpting this out. So let's hear what's, uh, what I'm saying here on regular speed. You can scuff the surfaces a little. This one's, this one's kind of sweeping around with a curve, so that's kind of funky. So I'm gonna pull that in and let this one stand out and then give myself a little bit of variety to the texture of it. So when you start doing these patterns, it's important to make it look like real stones were brought in. They would be offset slightly and you'd have the depth at the mortar joint areas They'd be, wouldn't have the exact same plane everywhere. There might be some spots that are, but other areas you want to break that up. And if it's an old wall, you can antique it with cracks that come in and it looks like parts are failing and have over the decades and eons lost the material that was that wall before. And then the good old brush softens the air areas a little bit. It's good to have a little bit of a sharper edge. But again, too much brushing can make things start to muddy out a little bit. And so we don't want to go too crazy with the brush either. Whatever tool we're using, whether it's a brush or a trowel or a big spreader, we want to make sure that we're not uh, sort of dominating this area that we're sculpting into something with just one trowel necessarily. Um, we're, you know, if we're going to be doing this in shotcrete, then this is very rough. These are very small textures to be doing in shotcrete because you have stones and gravel, pea gravel in your shotcrete. They're going to screw up your your um, 
your your joints here. They'll be really rugged, rugged. If we're going to come back and we're going to be putting a texture coat on, then we're going to be having you know different things that are going to be coming on here. <clears throat> you can do some of the throwing on of stuff, and that's a little bit moist, wet sand or some dirt, and uh, come back in your painting, paint over that, and then rinse that off, and that gives that reveals the color that's underneath here. So, so many tricks, so many different things you can do. Um, but you can practice this like, we, like we're talking about in the sand. And so we're looking at doing um, the examples of the rock work wall you want to do in sand first to establish maybe what you're going to do. What kind of um, dimensions do you want to have on your stone wall? Um, are these roundy natural stones, more river rock? or all these manufactured squarish stones that were made and then puzzle pieced in to make the wall. So, so there you go, man. Another uh, practicing in sand video. So Mr. Dave, you're just playing around on the, on the sand pile, if you will, up here at uh, Alpine Sky Studio. So, you know, practice with the sand, man, and uh, get your trials out and do your thing in the sand and you will increase your abilities, capabilities when it comes to making stuff in the uh, mortar mixes and shockrete even when you're doing the shockrete building. <coughs> it's, you can start, you can really have fun with this when you're making, <coughs> you know, a complete, you know, new thing. It's just, uh, it never, it never ends how much stuff you can do big cracks that come along and then they carry on into the other upper portion of what you're building where things are falling apart um, it's just uh, it's just a lot of uh, a lot of fun but it really does hone your skills and gets you a, gets you to be a stronger uh, sculptor when you're doing your stuff in your concrete and your mortar mixes it's really a good idea to practice in the sand. And you can just pack this stuff up again. You can make, uh, you know, different kinds of, of structures, again, in sand that you're just doing. All of this just in sand. Doesn't cost you anything. Sand is pretty much free. Once you got it, you can just keep reusing it. And uh, you know, making smaller stones. And you can take a look at it. Look at the pictures you see in nature. See how close you're coming to the real deal. Am I am I make, making it look like God made it? That's what we're trying to do. So there you go. Mr. Dave, just having fun on the rock pile, as it were, learning how to make our rocks by practicing in sand. Again, talking about how to make your stone wall elements. If you're using, um, if you're gonna make it look like beach or natural stones were used, then make sure you don't have patterns that look goofy, that start looking like something's going on here that's just not quite right. Um, look at the real deal, it's a good way to go, so. Uh, there you go. Remember to be thankful and forgiving in all ways, and you'll be a happy camper. You'll be a blessing and not a curse to those around you, which is very importante. So until next time, uh, keep uh, practicing um, your rock work in the sand. It's a great way to go and get you going in the right direction. So um, yeah, check out, uh, check out the videos we got going on and send me a like and uh, subscribe and stuff if this is a YouTube view and uh, we'll keep learning how to do cool stuff man all right mr. Dave checking out have a good one Bye.